Why would an 80-year-old accept a commission to build a boat? Without any original blueprints, he has only his wits and experience to rely on. Once again, the sounds of shipbuilders at work are heard in the old fishing town of Beitang. But will the old master shipbuilder and his team finish the boat on time? Find out in Shipbuilding, part of our unique handicraft series. There was a time when the sky above this remote but busy fishing town rang with the sound of work songs. Fishing boats dotted the sea off the coast. But as time passed, this scene gradually disappeared. Beitang in the Tanggul district of Tianjin has been a fishing town since the Qing dynasty. In the 21st century, this old town has been undergoing tremendous change, becoming an important satellite city for the Tianjin Binhai New Area. Early in 2012, Beitang's fishery administration decided to have a reproduction of an old boat made. The idea was to show tourists how the fishermen used to live in the past. In the announcement, it said the project should be completed before the tourist season, which would begin on May the 1st. The man commissioned to manage the project was Zhang Wenming, Initially, he hesitated to accept the offer, as he had no idea whether he'd be able to find the people or materials he would need. The old-style boats that ply the Bohai Sea have a round bow, a round stern, and a flat bottom. The shape is similar to that of a submarine.
the fishermen use their boats for more than just fishing and sailing. They also serve to store and transport goods. A fishing boat is small, but its structure is very complex. The builders had no blueprint for building such a boat. Everything would depend on their experience and skill. Zhang Wenming's first task was to find a master shipbuilder to take overall charge of the work. Zhao Hongqi's family has been building and repairing fishing boats for several generations. Zhao himself went to sea with the fishermen when he was only 13 years old. Now 80, he still has good hearing, good eyesight and a good memory. He is quick-witted and has nimble fingers. He is also well known for his expertise as a shipbuilder. John Wen Ming's problem was, given his age, would the old man accept the job? <laughs> It occurred to Zhao Hongqi that this might be his last chance to build a boat. So, despite his daughter's objections, he decided to accept the job. Building a boat requires carpenters, iron workers, caulkers, and other specialist craftsmen. Zhao talked to two of his former apprentices, Zhang Lian Yo and Xiao Hongqiang, both of them in their 60s. The two veteran shipbuilders who repair boats at Beitang Fishing Port readily agreed to join him. Three major steps are involved in building a boat like this one. Building the hull, caulking it, and installing the masts, rudder, and other parts. Each of these major steps comprises a number of lesser tasks. Master Zhao had not built a boat for 50 years, and with the safety of the boat and anyone sailing on it in mind, he felt under tremendous pressure. Why would an 80-year-old accept a commission to build a boat? Without any original blueprints, he has only his wits and experience to rely on. Once again, the sounds of shipbuilders at work are heard in the old fishing town of Beitang. But will the old master shipbuilder and his team finish the boat on time? Find out in Shipbuilding, part of our unique handicraft series. Li Shuihan is a local scholar and an old boat enthusiast. For more than a decade, he has been researching the methods of building old sailing boats. He has learned to draw the structures of the boats and even written a book on the subject. On February the 20th, Zhang Wenming and Zhao Hongqi traveled to Tangshan in Hebei province to select the timber for the boat. Old sailing boats use different kinds of timber for their different parts. 
The boat's fitting were made of camphor and maple wood. Its keel and sides were made of pine and china fir. A folk adage goes, pine wood remains sturdy for 1,000 years underwater. Maple wood remains sturdy for 10,000 years on the ground. However, maple and camphor wood are hard to find nowadays. So Master Zhao decided to use Korean pine, larch, and Chinese scholar wood instead. With the timber secured, Master Zhao and his team set to work at a dock in Beitang fishing port. In the old days, building a boat was a big event. A fishing family would often spend all their savings on a new boat. On the day when the work started, the family would hang colorful banners around the construction site, beat gongs and set off firecrackers. The scene was reminiscent of the Chinese New Year celebrations. The day when the keel was laid was designated the new boat's birthday. On this day every year afterwards, the family would eat birthday noodles. Despite his great age, Zhao Hongqi remains quick-witted. He remembers all the data and processes involved in building a boat. Once the keel has been laid, the holds can be built. This boat will be 12.6 meters long and 4.4 meters wide and divided into seven holds. Apart from the bow, water, net, trunk, horse gate and family holds, there will be the rear store hold where the ropes, fresh water, fishing nets, ballast and catch can be kept, the food can be cooked and the captain and helmsman can rest. In order to complete the boat before the May 1st deadline, Master Zhao and his team work from 6 o'clock in the morning until sunset. The modern tools make tasks such as sawing and drilling much easier and faster. The hull of this kind of boat is composed of five planks. The two nearest to the keel are five centimeters thick. The three above them are eight centimeters thick. The carpenters have the important task of sawing the timber for the various parts of the boat according to the design. Most of the wooden parts are curved and achieving this curvature is a key part of the carpenter's job. Master Zhao walks around the boat, constantly measuring. He is considering the next step. To an outsider, he seems to make decisions in a very casual manner. In fact, Zhao has already formulated the design of each part in his mind. Traditionally, a shipbuilder's skill is judged according to three criteria. One, calculating exactly the right amount of wood that will be needed. Two, building a boat that is both stable and fast. And three, making it sturdy and lasting.
Zhang Bao Chong and his colleagues are making the iron fittings for the boat. Next to the carpentry, the metalworking is the most important part of the work in building an old-fashioned boat. Numerous nails and clamps are needed to join the planks together. Shortly after daybreak on March 11th, the sounds of firecrackers and of the workers' laughter fill the shipyard. Today's the day when the shipboards will be aligned and the planks polished, marking the completion of the main part of the work. With the structure looking more and more like a boat with each passing day, people are becoming eager to see it finished. The pressure on the old man is mounting. Each boat he has built during his long career has been different. There is no unified standard for him to follow. It's been several decades since he last built a boat of this type, and he's worried about how it will sail after it's completed. Today's a very special day when Zhao Hongqi will fix the lucky wood onto the boat. The lucky wood is a block of wood fixed to the tip of the bow. Zhao Hongqi carves two grooves in it, places a coin wrapped in multicolored thread on it, and then attaches the lucky wood to the bow. This marks the formal completion of the first stage of the shipbuilding process. Next, the caulkers will set to work. The gaps between the planks are filled with a mixture of lime, tongue oil, and hemp. The wooden hull needs to be made watertight. A combination of oil and tar is used. First, among the preparations before the caulking can begin, the workers twist the hemp. The lime and tongue oil is pounded using a pestle. The mixture will be the putty filling the gaps between the planks. It's ready when it's smooth and sticky like butter. Zhang Wen Ming couldn't find any caulkers locally. So he hired six men from Tangshan, 60 kilometers away. The youngest of them is in his 50s. Why would an 80-year-old accept a commission to build a boat? Without any original blueprints, he has only his wits and experience to rely on. Once again, the sounds of shipbuilders at work are heard in the old fishing town of Beitang. But will the old master shipbuilder and his team finish the boat on time? Find out in Shipbuilding, part of our unique handicraft series. At 10 o'clock in the morning, the caulkers begin work, filling the long slit between the two lower planks. To shipbuilders, this phase of the work is just as important as installing the crossbeams is to a house builder.
the work songs haven't been heard in the town for many years. And they bring back some fond memories. The Calkers remember this place in years gone by, when it was a hive of activity during the shipbuilding season. The sky above Beitang would shake to the sounds of the workers' songs and the hammers striking the boat planks. But things are very different these days. pushed between the planks and repeatedly pressed to tighten it and make it even. It takes a caulker between one and two years to master these movements, which have been likened to a water buffalo grazing. ships piled the Bohai Sea for centuries, turning a vast stretch of the saline land into a flourishing fishing town. The 13 meter high main mast has already been erected. Today, it's the turn of the foremast. Erecting the mast is the final step in building the ship. smoothly until now. But suddenly, a sense of anxiety sweeps through the workforce. A problem has arisen in mounting the foremast. People look on anxiously. They find a bolt sticking out at the bottom of the mast, preventing it from fitting properly. The problem is solved by cutting off part of the bolt. With the addition of the rudder, the mass and the other parts, the gate knob ship is officially completed. Finally, Master Zhao and his team can smile again. Workers raise the sail like a victory banner. It flutters as if saluting Master Zhao and his team. It's a fine day, and the Gate Knob ship, built over 44 days at a cost of nearly 300,000 yuan, will undergo a trial at sea. At 9 o'clock in the morning, it sets out for the Beitang Estuary on the western shore of the Bohai Sea. There are still 10 days to go before the deadline for completing the boat. 
But already it has been announced that Beitang will build another ship, bigger than and very different from this one. Zhao Hongqi will be in charge of this project too. It seems it has fallen to the 80-year-old to save the ancient shipbuilder's craft. No one can tell how Master Zhao feels about this, but there is no doubting the determination in his eyes. He was the only Chinese member of the Bloomsbury Group. He was a Chinese author who gained unprecedented acceptance in the Western world. Later in life, he would play a leading role as an editor and translator in China. His name was Chun Chanye. What were the influences that started him out on his remarkable life's journey? Watch the first episode of a new series, The Writer Who Reached Out to the World. <laughs>